Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Actually, I came here as a listener, but the last moment, Lola uh, from yesterday, she was at the back of me, Kolima, Kiba Kobo, Kiba Kobo. Yes. So I had noted down a few things which was like, we can't stop it. Like as an academician and researcher, when something they speak, uh, immediately some reflections come to our mind. So these are some of the reflections uh, which came to my mind by listening to the different speakers. So uh, when uh, I called him Nonita because he was my senior, and when, the, when he deliberated his, uh, he gave his deliberation, Somewhere towards the end of his speech when he said that the system, uh, we have to change the system. So they are somehow disagree. I agree with his data because these are, those are data. But uh, we really need to change the system. I think the thing, the system is already there for such a long time but there are lots of loopholes. And those loopholes are very clearly highlighted by the uh, keynote speaker, Ruby Kumari Fukon. Uh, where she highlighted various things which were the loopholes of the system. I think those loopholes need to be worked out. Uh, instead of changing the system altogether, uh, she uh, very, even though uh, she said that she was not a good orator, but the point that she highlighted was, uh, was very benefiting for us because they are practicing it. And they know where things are going wrong. So since they know and they have already identified uh, where things have gone wrong, from where things have gone wrong, if that can be, uh, if that can be furnished uh, to the policy maker, I think a fast track coach will become much more effective. Uh, maybe this can be a resolution which can be taken in this seminar if, if it, it works out. And one thing when she was saying, uh, when uh, Mrs. Fukan was uh, discussed or was talking on the issues, if you have uh, listened to her issues of women which of this fast aid core, this looks very subjective. But the vice chancellor only said that we require objective solution. But the problem lies there. When we talk about women, women's problems are subjective in nature. So if women's problems are subjective in nature, to, so, to find solution to this problem also, the solution should also address the subjective needs of the women. So if the subjective needs are addressed properly, I think the fast track code will be much more effective. But one thing which I found missing uh, in this uh, deliberation by the, in the inaugural session is that we are not talking about, we are talking the fast track code, we are talking about the numbers. Yes, we go by the numbers. But why one section of the numbers is left out when we're talking about the fast head code? Why are we not talking that the numbers of cases are also increasing? So the numbers of fast head code also need to be increased. So if the numbers are increasing and the justice delivery system is just intact with those number of fast head code, how can we find justice? This is what my reflection because I am not from the judiciary, so uh, people from that field they will be understanding it better. And another thing which I feel and I strongly believe is that our perspective needs to change. Like we, when we in in most of the seminars and most in most of the seminars which is related to women, I am invited. We talk about women, but we also need to talk about the perpetrators. We don't talk about the perpetrators in a larger way, and our there should be shift in our perception. Like we talk about the victims, but I don't want to address them and victim their survivors. So instead of this thing should go hand in hand, we should also see who are the perpetrators and where are the perpetrators move, how they are, their socioeconomic background, their political background, their position in the society that also needs to be studied. <coughs> and that is the other section of the society and where there is and in the other section, in the other, when we talk about the perpetrators, there lies the power, there lies patriarchy, there lies position. I think uh, there isn't a balance between the two. And maybe that's why, uh, and if we look at those issues from a perspective, from the perpetrators, then who are the perpetrators? Maybe we can prevent this crime from happening to a large extent. But it will take many years. It will take many years, but why not to make a start? 
And this is another thing which always comes to my mind because when we talk about a justice delivery system, broadly if we categorize the three fundamental things which are associated there is the police, public and judiciary. And if we look at the way this police system or the police administrative system operates, it is even though the Britishers have left, the colonial legacy still sustains and still stays in the way we operate. So that also needs to be looked upon. But it is very difficult because we cannot change the system overnight, but definitely we can take some initiative and relocate. Because police, or when we talk about the justice delivery system and where police is associated, police deals with the perpetrators and police deals also with the victims. But when we enter a police station, as though we are uh, the the cordial atmosphere doesn't exist in a police station. So that also, I don't know how it can be changed, but this is what I always ponder upon. And uh, yes, we have all the uh, fast track courts are in the district headquarters. <coughs> and by now we have 35 districts, but we have only 27 fast track courts. So when the district is formed, why not, along with the formation of the district, the other systems are not put into place? We do not enter a house without the structure. So if a district is formed, why not the other structure also comes in along with the new changes that happened? So uh, I think I have almost covered what was going on in my mind. Again, uh, when we talk about that hideous crime, or severe crime. This crime is also very relative. For someone, if burglary, if for a rich person, a burglary after certain crows is a big amount for him. But for a poor person, even few thousands of rupees, maybe he is year or long earning. In the same way, when we talk about violence against women, it is very subjective in nature. Mental violence, we may say that it doesn't leave any scars on your body, but it goes on, it sustains for so long, it, uh, like scars remains for such a long period of time. But we do not consider to a great extent as crime also, well. they are because they are invisible. So how to bring in all those type of um, crimes into the fast track, uh, that also needs to be looked upon, like which is serious, which is not serious. So if there are political pressures, if there are public outcry, there is uh, mob coming in, then only it becomes uh, a big crime or small crime, but it isn't so. I think each and every crime are serious. That's why it is crime. Because as far as my study goes, I did a study of 60 women. Out of the 60 women, only 6 registered their cases. And they have, and they have registered their cases. And like and they themselves didn't register their cases, somebody else went on behalf of them and they registered the cases. So actually we are sitting on a bomb. It's like a volcano. Like if you ask the women out here, I, I'm sure 90% of women are victims of some form of crime or the other in this room itself. But they are not registered. As science cases are high because it is getting registered because people like Anurita and all and different organizations are working on the grassroots encourage your women to come out from the home and get themselves get the cases registered. And if more cases gets registered, we don't know where we where we lead to. Only six percent of the cases gets registered. So we should be prepared for that. And the more women are coming out, the more women are getting and uh, educated, empowered, I think more cases cases are going to come up. I think this is but the police people, police people in the police department shouldn't feel threatened that why more cases are being registered. Instead, they should find a solution to that. And one solution can be the fast track courts. And more fast track courts should be there because in more numbers, we all know this is simple logic. When more number, there should be more solution or more avenues to address the solutions. But why so few? And why certain cases? For me, my problem is the most important problem. So why are we categorizing it? Who are we to categorize some women, some other people's family issues? Their family problem is the biggest problem. So let us take every problem, every 
balance of women as very important. I think then only things, I am talking very, very philosophically, but it is fact. It is a fact. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. The KPHSA fraternity has always remained grateful to you for accepting our invitation. You have always been our support. Thank you for accepting our invitation this time and being present and encouraging us. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.